TGO, Tom Grunewald Outdoors, is brought to you by HT, premium ice tackle since 1974. Polar Fire Gear, this is how it's done. Tourism Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, Canada's best freshwater fishing. Vexilar, ice fishing begins when you turn your Vexilar on. Kalispell, Montana, discovery in every direction. And these other fine sponsors. Hello everyone and welcome to Tom Grunewald Outdoors. I'm Tom Grunewald and today we're fishing with my good friend Aaron Castor. We're on Lake Superior Schwamigan Bay, just outside of Ashland, Wisconsin. What's really neat about this area is that this time of the year, we're talking late January, we've got a good solid 12 to 14 inches of ice. We're gonna be able to kind of work out toward the islands, the famous Madeline Island out in that area, but we're not gonna go all the way out to them. We're going to try to work some flats in about 70 to 80 feet of water. Now what's nice about this area is we can catch a whole variety of species. They catch lake trout, catch whitefish, lake herring, occasionally even catch some salmon out in this area, steelhead. It could be just about anything. And with this kind of water, those fish will come through right along on the bottom to suspended. Using the sonar, we can watch, see where they're coming through and raise up to them. The lake herring, for example, tend to usually come through suspended, sometimes only five or 10 feet beneath the ice here in 70 or 80 feet of water. We'll be able to see that using the sonar. Lake trout, the whitefish, more bottom related for sure. Now with the sonar here, I will actually use the zoom feature. I'll be able to zoom in on that bottom six feet or the auto zoom two setting, the bottom 12 feet, which is even nicer. We can sit there and monitor the bottom, watch for those whitefish and lake trout while watching for suspended lake herring, maybe steelhead, or even a salmon. But this is exciting fishing. This is big water. It's going to be a good time. Hey, join us right here today on TGO as we fish Lake Superior's Shawamigan Bay. I just want to show you the rig that I'm going to be using here today. It's important to be rigged and ready to go when you're trying to get on these fish, and when you do, you want to be ready. I've got a 42-inch medium-heavy sapphire ice rod here. It's made by HT, and what I like about this rod is I've got tip action, so I've got good control and feel in my presentation, but plenty of strength and backbone to set the hook and fight the fish. And the longer rod gives me advantage of a longer sweep on the hook set, and of course I can drop down. I get more presentation control, more fish fighting control with such a rod paired that up with an eight bearing polar fire spinning reel. And very importantly, it's braided line that I've spooled with. This is a 10 pound test power pro, minimal if any stretch. So when you're fishing in this deeper water, better sensitivity for feeling baits and hits and better hook setting power. And on top of that, I just tied on a barrel swivel with an eight pound monofilament. You could also use fluorocarbon here leader. That's just something so I get a little spookier fish in this clear water. They don't see the line, but you could tie directly. Many times it doesn't matter that much. And I've got a little quick clip on here, and that little quick clip allows me to snap on a variety of different sizes and styles and colors of baits, lures, whatever it might be. Aaron's got some secret spoons he's been using, bigger than I usually use for whitefish. I could borrow some spoons from him or clip on my own with this. Of course, by not tying a knot directly too with that rounded swivel, I get a lot of action with my spoons and baits as well. So. We're set to go. Aaron's going to be coming over here in just a minute. We're going to get on the snowmobile and head out onto Lake Superior's Shubwamigan Bay. There he is. All right, Tom. Yeah, feels pretty good. Yeah, that's a good fish, Tom. Yeah, just a couple of little bumps there. They weren't quite as aggressive. Yeah. This one came in a little harder. Good deal. Maybe it's a laker, you never know. No, it hasn't made uh, that, uh, that, that giant yet. dive head yeah. shake thing like a lake trout yet, but there right, we go. Hey, whitey. <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad. Boy, Good that's fun. Fish. I love whitefish, actually. Let me point out just how big these lures are that Aaron has us using. This is a, a, a large uh, Williams spoon. It's a Canadian spoon, it's got a great finish on it. This combination of gold and silver. Some people are saying they're getting on silver, some are saying gold. 
So Aaron mixed it up, gave me the spoon, but this is uh, kind of unusual, isn't it? To use a spoon that size for these whitefish, or yep. is that normal for you? Around here, it's it's getting to be a more common thing. Years ago, guys were sizing down like they would in typical areas. Yeah. And then some of the guys started getting them on these bigger spoons, just playing around, and it's it's been a good uh, a good lure since. Well, the nice thing about that is too is you get a better chance than if one of those big lake trout yes. flakes come through with brown trout. Yep. So it's a lot more versatile. All right, that was fun. I'm going to get back down there and get back on them. More fishing action online at tgofishing.com. What I like to do with these whitefish is I bring them up, have them follow, and they'll follow sometimes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten feet. And then after I work them a little bit, I'll pause. And a lot of times on the pause is where that's when they'll hit. And a lot of that I think has to do with their downturn mouths. Now with the lake trout, the same technique can work, but a lot of times uh, you get them chasing, just kind of keep coming up. They'll come up and, and hammer it, um, even without the pause. And you'll notice, uh, as you're watching uh, um, Aaron and I working these lures, um, we're moving and pumping them quite often. And that's just because you're on this big flat, there's a lot of fish cruising around. You're trying to bring them in, help them find your bait. The water is very clear, so they can see it for a ways out. But the more you move the bait around, get their attention, the more chance you're gonna get an aggressive fish to come in and, uh, and hit that bait. Fish on! All right. Woo! Woo -hoo. Hey, my first white fish out here. Look at that. Oh, it is. Yeah, nice blue hair. That is cool. That is cool. You never know what you're going to catch no, out here, do you? Not at all. Look at that. Okay, so this is a, this is actually called a lake herring. And these usually, you find these suspended, right? Yep. I mean, this one was uh, about two feet off of the bottom. He came racing up after it, chased it, and hit. But uh, looks a lot like a, a white fish, but if you look at the mouth, yep. it's not curved down like the, the white fish is. But, wow, that is neat. Yeah, they're pretty fish. What an incredible fishery. You know, and there's there's just miles and miles and miles of, uh, of water out here. And to be able to come out on a flat like this and find them, you know. Yeah, it's a hoot. When you get on these fish out here, it's 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 unbelievable. I mean, we're just sitting here and everybody's dropping down and, and seeing fish. Yeah, it's been steady action. Everybody's been swinging and hooking and landing. It's, it's a great morning so far. Oh, that's great stuff. You want to keep a couple of yeah, these? Yeah, smoke them. Oh, fantastic. You don't hey. like our pickled fish. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put that line back down there again. This is great, Aaron. Good. good deal, Tom. Mm. Win some, lose some. He's shaking pretty good now. the flavor of the day. Yeah, let's see what it is. Stand down. What do you think? You gonna make a guess before we see I'm gonna say a lake trout. I can feel that head racking pretty good. Cool. But I've been wrong before. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to say out here. I see you switched over to the braid now instead of the mono. Yeah. That makes a difference too, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it can. Yeah, no, yeah. white. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Nothing wrong with that at no. all. No. He slammed that one, huh? Yeah, yeah, he grabbed that one pretty good. I've been missing quite a few of them the last few minutes here, but this one got her just right. Yeah, so I think it's interesting how that, that current kind of came up. Everything slowed down for like yeah. 10 or 15 minutes. We weren't really marking anything. And all of a sudden, boom, those fish started coming back in again. And that's it. So it's kind of interesting. The current was coming from one direction. Yep. You know, we're bang, bang, catching fish. It kind of settled a little bit. You can see the line hanging straight. Boom, then it switched off, went the other direction. Yep. And we had 10 or 15 minutes there. I didn't mark a fish. Right, right. Now, all of a sudden, they come back through again. Do they reposition themselves out there according to those currents? And, and yeah. OK. Yeah, when a current slacks off, then they just kind of mill around. Yeah. You know, we've watched them on the cameras. And you'll even watch like herring that are up. They suspend a lot underneath the ice. Yeah. And when there ain't no current, they just kind of mill around. You know, just kind of pop in their mouth. They don't really know which direction they really want to go. Yeah. But then when that current will start picking back up, 
then they'll just swing around and they'll drive right into it. Just sure. like a, a fish on a stream where they always sure. face into that current. And it's the same out here in the in this in this deeper water with these fish. They always right. feed into that current, you know, hoping it's gonna bring more bait fish in and everything's going into it so they can come up behind it and a lot of times just slip up on the schools of bait fish and whatnot. Sure. They're all positioned in one direction a lot of times. Got a little bump there. <laughs> yep. Well, that didn't take very long. I tell you, Aaron came out, he said, uh, he says, Tom, he says, uh, it's been spotty, it's been a little hit and miss, but the last couple days actually have been pretty good. So we started getting a good report. And it's a small lake trout. Of course, I got it in my transducer card here, so that'll make things interesting, but we'll get them. <laughs> Not a big, uh, a big lake trout by Lake Superior standards or anything like that, but I'll tell you what, what a bunch of fun to fish. But this is a great start right here. You gotta be a little careful with them. You don't wanna bring them up too fast when you wanna release them. And just give her a chance here and let her go. And there she goes. Great start, great start. There's more fishing action to come right here on TGO. There he is. All right, Tom. Feels just a slight bit heavier, Aaron. All right, good. We'll see, we'll see. Whoops, better. Get out of your way there a little. Boy, it's fun when you get to 72 feet of water, you get to fight these fish for a while yeah. too. It's not like pulling them up out of 10 or 12 feet. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it it's, uh, makes for a nice little battle. Oh yeah, decent lady. Nice. Okay, so three fish. I've got a lake trout, a lake herring, and now a white fish. What's gonna be next? You don't know out here. <laughs> could be a big brown, it could be a steelhead. You just don't know out here. You've got splake, steelhead, sturgeon. That's not a bad white fish. No. There is it. No, not bad at all. I tell you, and I like, I like white fish. I like white fish. Oh, yeah. Well, you'll have some to go home with, I do believe. <laughs> I think we're in good shape already. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're clicking along nice this morning. Everybody's catching fish. No real big ones yet, but just nice average fish. Aaron's hooked up. Yeah, it's coming up pretty decent. Not a bad one. Ain't huge, but it's all right. Yeah. yeah not all bad. Just nice eaters today. You bet. Yeah, not all bad. A guy can come out in a group, a bunch of friends, and just have a good time with these. Well, Tom, what do you think? Should we get some more of these? Hey, go. Keep going. Oh, keep we'll going. Do that. Limits 10. Limits 10. We'll get to them. All right, well, we've been talking about these currents out here and how they affect your fishing. And what'll happen a lot of times, you'll be sitting here and, uh, and you're jigging, you can see your bait, you can see the spoon down there, and all of a sudden it disappears. You can't see it on the screen at all. And what's happening is, is that current blows up, blows stronger, and it pushes the bait out of the sonar cone where you can't see it. So the way to compensate for that is to turn up your gain. And we always say turn your gain down as far as you can and still see your lure. And out here, what will happen is that current will change so fast it will blow that spoon or move it out of the sonar cone. By turning your gain up, you're almost, what you can be thinking of it as, as enlarging the cone, enlarging the area that that sonar is uh, seeing, and all of a sudden your lure will show back up again. So whereas I normally want to keep that gain turned way down, I might add uh, one or two or as low as it goes, out here in this deeper water, I'll be turning it up to seven or eight, or sometimes with a really strong current, all the way up, just so that I can see my bait, make sure that I can watch those fish reacting down there. It's an important thing to think about when you're fishing in deeper water. There, I got him. No, you hooked up. Need help? I don't know, maybe. It's a nice fish. All right, it's coming. Feels pretty good. Actually, it's, it feels a little better than average. That or just got a lot of heart. We don't know yet. <laughs> won't tell until we see the white of the eyes. This is so much fun when you're when you're fishing in deeper water like this, and you really get the chance to fight the fish. Oh yeah. You're down in uh, five, 10, 15 feet of water where you fish so often in ice fishing. You just don't get the same experience as no. this being able to fly. There's your leader. Your leader. And oh, yeah. another white, another nice white fish. Yeah. Beautiful fish. 
You got that, that's uh, two or three of those nice, thick, fat-bodied white Yeah, fit. I can't even get my hand around this one. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. A lot of fun to catch. Oh, they're good, ain't they, Tom? They really are. Yeah. yeah, we ain't get as many lake trout mix in today as we have in the past few days, but they'll come through. Yeah, betcha. Yeah, you betcha. Yeah, when you got fish like this around and the smaller ones and so forth, them big lakers ain't usually far behind them. Let's find out how it's done with a TGO tackle tip from Tom. Well, we're out here on Lake Superior and this is big water and safety has to be number one at all times. It's always important to make sure you've taken every precaution you possibly can. Wear safety picks. Make sure you have those on your person. Have along a throw rope. Every, anything you possibly can. Cell phone. Keep it in a Ziploc bag so you're ready. I want to show you something else here that's another thing you might want to consider if you fish big water like this regularly and that's called this nebulous and what's really neat about this thing is that you can strap this onto your four-wheeler, you can put this on your snowmobile and in the event that you go through, you pull the rip cord, there's a CO2 activated canister inside of this that will inflate, basically it's a life raft that will not only hold up to three people but it will also float your snowmobile or your four-wheeler so your machine's not going to sink. Yeah, you're still going to have water damage and problems but you're not going to lose your machine, more importantly you're not going to lose your life. So what I'd like to do is show you how this works. And this is kind of interesting. I haven't actually pulled one of these myself. I think that uh, if you do buy a nebulous, it's something I hope that you'll never use. But in any event, um, I'm going to pull this uh, rip cord and watch how this inflates. So you want to do the honors there, Aaron? Help me sure. out. OK. From the instant it goes, you'd have something to grab a hold of to float you. There it is, absolutely. You got the rings on the outside that you can grasp a hold of to keep yourself um, afloat. And then, of course, you can pull yourself up onto the top of this. Again, your snowmobile, your four wheeler will be suspended and float underneath. You can see where it's taking a little time, but the, the majority of this is obviously it's enough to get a person up so that you're not going to go underneath. By this time, something is happening. Hopefully you've got somebody nearby that can help with that throw rope or is gonna be able to come over and, and, and help you out. Again, holds up to three adults. In this case here, um, would hold, of course, the snowmobile or the four-wheeler. And you can see the canisters here on this back side. That's what inflates the unit. You got the rings right here that you can grab a hold of to help lift yourself inside. Just another safety precaution that you might want to consider if you're doing a lot of ice fishing on big water or if you're traveling in an area that you haven't traveled before and you're not sure exactly about the ice conditions or if you might be crossing ice heaves or anything where there might be any kind of a danger, might be something you want to consider. There he is. That's fun. That's fun. It had been about... Uh, Oh, a good 15, 20 minutes. I hadn't seen a whole lot of fish coming through. The current picked up strong. Oh, it looks like you got a pretty nice fish on your Tom. Came back through and yep, yep. All right. It'd been quite a while since I'd seen any. Great. And uh, also a couple came through. I'd say, hey, bump or two, and awesome. then bang. Boy, that's a nice one too. Came in and hit that, yeah. Oh yeah. These yeah, aren't bad at all. You know, when you were describing the size of the whitefish and you're saying, oh, 15, 20 inches, I don't know. These are all of that, if not more. Yeah, some of them are a little better. You know, that's a thick bodied fish. You look at that. Yeah. And yeah, these are just so much fun to catch. You know, and these whitefish have become more and more popular here in the States. Uh, yeah. They've always were popular in Canada. People really like their uh, whitefish. But it's only, uh, well, Lake Superior, I guess, has got a little more history with these whitefish. Yeah. But it's really starting to come on over on Lake Michigan, especially on the Bay of Green Bay the last right. couple of years. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. People, they, they, they think of Lake Superior, they just think of the trout. You know, we've got the whitefish in great numbers. We've got all the trout species. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. Now, that was a fun day. You know, we got up early this morning, came out here. It was cloudy, and uh, it was about 20, 25 degrees. Um, prediction is that there's supposed to be a cold front coming in, so the skies are going to clear, temperatures are going to start to fall, and we thought, well, you know what, this is going to be a great opportunity, maybe right at that change, if we can get out there early, we would be able to get on the fish. We were able to come out here 
and Aaron put us on a really nice school of whitefish. I mean, we came out here, we're both able to catch uh, our bag limit, 10 apiece, and initially we thought we were gonna be getting fish maybe 15, 17, 20 inches. We caught some every bit of that and bigger, some really nice white fish. They're a lot of fun to catch. I'll tell you what, we're using these longer rods, fishing in deep water, big spoons. They're hitting that so hard and then being able to retrieve them up um, 60 and 70 feet. Really, they put up a really nice fight. They're a whole lot of fun. I want to stop. I want to thank Aaron Kasten for taking the time to come out here and fish on Lake Superior, Schwamigan Bay. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. No matter where we go, no matter what we fish for, you know here on TGO, it's going to be all ice fishing all the time. TGO has been brought to you by HT, premium ice tackle since 1974. Polar Fire Gear, this is how it's done. Tourism Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, Canada's best freshwater fishing. Vexilar, ice fishing begins when you turn your Vexilar on. Kalispell, Montana, discovery in every direction. And these other fine sponsors. TGO, where it's all ice fishing all the time.